Hello, good morning to all of you. I'm quite excited to be able to talk to you while feel also feeling sorry at the same time that I am not with you at this moment in, in person, but in spirit, I am with you. I'm quite excited that our dream of working together as a team is coming true. Instead of the original you know, situation where each hospital or each institution did its own thing. So I'm very, very excited because as we say that uh, when you are together, you become stronger. Today, you are gathered for two important things. The first one is the core of what you do. What you do as health institutions, but also the two radio stations that we are working with, Radio Y and Radio Purchase. The core work that you do is quite important to development, but also the furtherance of the Word of God through healing and through passing messages. You are also gathered today specifically to try to see how you can sustain these institutions. And resource mobilization is one important thing, one of those important things necessary for sustenance of the institutions. But I want to add here and stress that sustenance is not just only about resource mobilization because you can mobilize resources of different types, but with, when you don't properly manage them, or you don't govern the resources well, you may fail actually to put the resources to good use. So managing and governance of the whole institution, including the resources that are mobilized, is very, very key as well. But I also want to stress here that resource mobilization is not about just writing proposals for asking for money. Resource mobilization is not just about project proposal writing. You can write very good project proposals but fail to get the money for those proposals. And somebody else will write weaker proposals and may get the money. Response mobilization involves fundamentally relationship building. You need to build relationship with everybody so that people understand you over a period of time. They don't only understand your project proposal because somebody can write a very sweet project proposal when actually behind the scene there's a lot of things to doubt. But when you have built relationship, people understand you eventually. And through that there is trust building. So building of trust is very key in resource mobilization. So I'm talking about building of trust I'm talking about relationship building that can lead you to mobilizing resources. Now, when we are also talking about resource mobilization, we need to look at proper use of the resources that we get. Because when you use resources well and account, it adds to the trust it adds to the relationship building. It strengthens the relationship you have and people will want to work with you. I hope that during this course, which is focused on resource mobilization, some of these things will as well be touched and not only concentrate on the fact that you need to write good proposals and, uh, you know, and send them where. You have to send them to people who trust you, people have learned about you. That brings me to the other point 
that for people to know you and to know what you are doing, you need also to communicate. You need to be visible. So visibility creation is very important. Let people know what you are doing, not in an arrogant manner, but let what you are doing speak, and but also speak about what you are doing. So communication is another important thing. You need to know how to communicate, what to communicate, to whom to communicate, when to communicate, and communicate sometimes proactively. When you build relationship, don't wait for your partner or the donor to ask you something. You need to build relationship where sometimes you proactively share with your donors, with your partners, with your colleagues. You share what you are doing so that they become part of it. So communication, again, I want to stress, is very, very important. It helps to build the trust that we are talking about. It helps to create visibility. Let people know what you are doing. And as UCMB, we are very happy to share anything good about what you are doing to try to further that visibility. So I don't want to take too much of your time. I know that you have a lot to cover. I'm very happy to be part of this initiative. In this moment, I think years to come, I will gladly look back and say I was there when these hospitals started coming together and learning together and sharing. And therefore, I want to wish you and the facilitators a nice time teaching and learning so that this can be useful to our hospitals and for the good of the people that the Lord has entrusted us to serve. I wish you a good time. And with that, I declare the workshop open. God bless you.
they, it was not their plan, really, but because of what they have seen, they will actually tell you there is a call for those accounts. Because also they are interested to work with partners who are what? Accountants who are giving them a good image to their bank donors. So every other donor have also other sources where they are getting the funds. So they want to also engage, they will tell you because they know you are good and they want to continue working with you. Because you give them a good rating in, fund, in terms of fundraising and so on. So it's extremely important and we have to take this vision of the donor very, very seriously. Because it gives you the opportunity to strengthen your relationship with the donor. If it were weak, that's an opportunity for you to strengthen. Because uh, your relationship would be weak because of some things that happened in the past against you. You see now donors are pulled out, right? But now new management is key. The old donor is saying, let me first go back and see if things have changed. You have an opportunity to strengthen that relationship with the donor by what you say, what they will see in your institution, your preparedness in the institution. Um, and as I said in the morning, once the donor says I'm coming, it already shows interest in the donor. Well, you may not know what the interest is, but at least it's a good sign. <laughs> Take it positive that that's a good sign that they're interested in your institution. A donor who has problems with an organization will not bother to go. Just send auditors. But the one who will actually say, I'm coming, and sometimes you'll even come for two days, three days. Wow, that's huge interest. You need to abandon your things, if it's possible, and give them the due attention. Because it can be a powerful opportunity for you to seal and strengthen those relationships. And you need to have an open discussion with the donor. And a part of the discussion. I have visited partners, and then you see them shrinking from the donors. You know, they, they are speechless, they don't even know what to say. Ah, partnership is based on mutual trust and mutual respect. Donors have that in mind. So you know that they are giving funding in order to achieve their mission through you, right? You need the funding in order to achieve also your mission. But at the same time, you have to do So there is some exchange, there is a mutual respect and trust. Use that in your mindset to work with the donor. You have mutual trust and respect. Don't over show cutters. Sometimes you over show cutters. You almost want to. Hey, what for? You become suspicious. <laughs> you are too courteous, and then you're too suspicious. Because your behavior and your words, somehow there's a disconnect. In fact, they'll ask, but they ask another donor, how is it when you visit this partner? You will say, something is he was like this. Like, That's strange. You get it? Strange. Some people behave differently, you know. Find a way to be open and uh, interact at par with the donor, we appreciate that we appreciate that very much. Where you are a free environment to discuss and exchange honestly about some of your key challenges, not all uh, a number of things. Uh, site visits is really important and uh, we emphasize this a lot. You need to plan that the visit scene is believing. Some of the locations, some of the challenges you face in the field, you need those donors to experience those challenges. So that as they're advising you on things, they will realize that, oh my God, you can't go to place from another location to this location. Because your context is different. And you have the experience of the context. Ah, they can be saying, you know that those recommendations will give you some time. But they will change once they come on the ground and you take them to those places. Uh, very difficult to <laughs> Balance it, eh? let them experience how field work is. They actually go up. I went to Lodo, uh, Lodo one time to visit the partner there. Because when we were, before I visited, they would ask tough questions. <laughs> ask all these questions. And I went there. I came back humble. You know how the dogs do when they're another couple? Doing the thing, you become an advocate for the partner because of what you see. I saw the teacher's house where the teacher stays. It is small, I said to the Samurai. I like what Brother Gunta was doing. He brings statistics. He brings in information head on. He engages you again. He will make noise until you come up with something. So what strategies do you have in order to engage the donor? Prior, because many organizations will submit a proposal to the donor, but you're not known. It may be actually good. One doctor said it was true, Dr. Raj. He said, you may have good proposals, but they're not funded. Because that comes back to what have you done prior to submitting the proposal. So we need to think about strategy. We shall think about some of them. How do you utilize, 
Um, we've seen many organizations use one or two strategies for resource mobilization. It has come up as BF. Yeah, the, one of them, uh, you've talked about charging user fee. Some of you have stopped at that level. RBF and user fee, what else can we do? Some are only applying for proposals. You know, the only thing they do is apply for, for grants. What else can we do to improve resource mobilization? We'll be looking at that. Because that affects ultimately your resources. Inadequate research on prospective donors. Um, how much do you know about prospective donors? It came out from the presentation that uh, there are those who actually have the resources, but they, they, they are donors who are actually looking to fund, but they, they don't have they don't have a matching partner. I have I have come across some donors and some partners who are starting to do what they call they are trying to come up with a tool uh, to assess organizations and assess what are you doing. Like, people who are doing water and sanitation health, and they are trying to come up with like, a due diligence, to come up and map up uh, local partners, local organizations in these different areas. Like now you say you have physiotherapy in that field. That could be an interesting area. They may be having partners out there who want to finance this. So what they're doing right now is to identify organizations, you know, what are you doing in your area, and then they're going to map you out into a database that will be available to donors. Because they've told me they're donors who are fans, but they don't have, they don't know they who to fund. So over time, now we have actually gone into some sort of a cooperative agreement, especially for technical, technical work. Yeah, there are some human resources that I simply can't afford to hire and even keep. So what we do is a simple agreement. When, we, when there's a need, we inform them, we transport them, we feed them, we house them, they come, do the work, and take them back. So I think these are some of the areas we could, we could strengthen so much. And it could still go further, even into areas of medical medical needs. Dr. Tukume may not may not have a gynecologist in a guy, but he might have a very, very good pediatrician or something like that. I was actually thinking, as, as institutions, when we're developing our strategic vision, we could reinforce this position. And, and just like that, we have a, a very good collaborative approach. Together with the radio stations, so this is just a bit of sharing, but all this is already going on and, and it, it's a very good thing. Thank you. His statement, and uh, mm -hmm. like we have this, what we call the Oxen Fund, is uh, a console yeah. uh, mm -hmm. that combines the two or three studio together. Mm -hmm. It has developed a problem, and right now as we talk, it's with the uh, radio parties, their technicians made assessment on it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, since we were not having uh, specialized technicians mm -hmm. to handle it, radio patches helped us a lot to identify the problem. Wow. So the only thing we're remaining with is to get the spare. And I came, I have worked in this network for coming to 17, 18 years. Now, the original aspect of coordination was that uh, these facilities should be part of the board members of the others. And I know in the greater children region, that I think is the system. Even when I went to West Nile, it was, it was being applied. The, 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 the managers of the sisters' institution were board members. But somehow the idea faded off, which I, I want to, to, to appeal to the, to the network that we need to reinstate that. Because that is where we get to share how we manage these different institutions. In the, in the, in the aspect of, even be, be, be before the board meeting, you will be sharing with your colleagues on issues of how do you mobilize your resources and how do you manage the ones that you already have. I think good, this would, would help us to have that bonding so that we move together. Thank you. Father, let us say Brother Elio, Elio.
understand the sense of this. I want to honor him in this meeting because I think he led, he led all this and uh, he cared for all these hospitals, uh, not just in Northern Uganda actually. Mm. And uh, I think we should think deeper uh, so that this is sustained and maintained even when he is not there. I think when he was there, the resources were not fully really dependent on the hospitals. Mm. It's also really true. But now we have to do the more formal and we have to also find ways of getting this to work. Um, now I wanted to speak a little bit around the other technical, so the medical side. I know that increasingly we are having uh, particular niches, so Papuka or whatever we call them, Kipu now has high niches, it's, it's good. There's a small optic center that has been located in the jaw, and we know that is where to refer because who will be here still? <laughs> there are challenges. We now have an orthopedic surgeon, and I think stable in, in the region and within the unit. In the job? Yes, yes. Okay. Since three, four years. So and two. There are not only really one, two. Plus and there are traffic so. more prosperous now. Mm -hmm. So, and, and uh, Abe has a CT scan, for example. These are opportunities that I think, uh, I'm sure that it's, uh, they cannot use it just for the patients of there, because we know where to refer. But I want to say something about, uh, so we have had senior doctors. I believe they have uh, supported. There are times of crisis that uh, each of these facilities may have gone through. Again, providing support. Sometimes it's formal, sometimes it's also informal. One big area of gap is research, which I see as an opportunity. Uh, I have led a team to try to research and, and to work with all the, the hospitals here, except across the, the line. And, uh, but this is an area that could also lead to resource, mm. to mobilization of resources. They, they, they felt like they could use a separate technical manager's work. Because they were super specialized, <laughs> and then there were hospitals that were treating cough and diarrhea. <laughs> We're in a situation where there's a lot of attrition, there's a lot of uh, labor mobility in our facilities. That's true. And money is just one of them. But another is the quest to develop. And the development that most of our staff seek is actually career development. Now, um, a week ago, I, I again attended another meeting and we were told that there are nowadays many ways of career development, particularly for the, the surgical disciplines. You can now go and do it by apprenticeship and fellowship. And with our biggest hospital, me, I was trained in Buru here, and I still believe that if I'm going to do a clinical discipline, I can still come to Lacho. And uh, what Lacho could do is to, I think, contact things like processor. So you are a training site. You're already a training site. That's why it was just uh -huh. that in a before going for MA. Yes. So okay. if, if, if that could happen, and if it's really happening, maybe they should consider expanding it to, to other districts. And an agreement would be reached where I have a when I have a medical officer in Nyapia, for example, and they're interested in surgery, we would just send to my job. When they're done, they go back to us. That way. They do not retain them, they should not retain Just to know the person. <laughs> Prime Minister or other members of Parliament were around. And so it was quite a, a good occasion also to tell these uh, political people that I hope that the Jubilee will not end up, it was very joyous and of course colorful, will end up in uh, insolvency of the hospital. And um, I also shared three weeks after with the UCMB network
during a hospital manager's technical workshop in Kampala that this imminent insolvency is about to come. And of course, you know, when it's the first time happening, it's like when a woman delivers, she doesn't really know how it happens, how it goes. So for me, what, how will we, will we go about when we go insolvent? How do I know that we are about to be insolvent? The only, know, the only thing I know is that the money is not there, or is very little, liquid. We have plenty of assets and of stuff, but these you don't sell. And then we had some money which was an emergency money we had to use. So then there was a little fixed asset, I can tell you fixed money, because we are managers after most of us. We are all in the same boat. Also this one I have used now, January, February. So this is also. And then in a quarter, when we get it, it's about 50 million, not even 50, a bit less than 50 million we get from government PSC condition grant in the water. We used to get more. So also this one doesn't last, doesn't help a lot because I need salaries to pay. I need to buy drugs. Of course, you know you are managers yourself. You have um, water, you need electricity, you need drugs, they say only drugs and something. All these proposals, so this to write proposals, again with partners. So this was the experience of Kipu and Joseph. And that's why you now have an eye center there. But because they work with the, uh, with the others, networking with others with interest. And they said they, they was working with resourceful persons. This is what lacks in many of the facilities. You have people that are doctors, first of all, they're doing management, that is a burden enough. Somebody said headache for free. <laughs> <laughs> they're doing management now, you, you think they're the experts of resource mobilization. It's a bit hard. So, people work with specific persons. Mm -hmm. And I think Radio, uh, Radio Patches has a dedicated team, one who is a project officer for uh, project development officer. So, he <coughs> develops projects, writes them. And 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 and, use, and and then they, they, they compete. So mm -hmm. there are many grants that have been written. Some of them failed. And which kind of teams have worked? So so let's say all the hospitals somehow really struggle to write grants here and there. Uh, some people sometimes respond to calls. Sometimes try unsolicited sometimes here uh, have a good idea and write it out. So that is really the experience. I wanted to go deeper a little bit into the experiences, for example, of a donor uh, or of a foundation. The foundation perspective, for example, they invest in packaging. So for example, they write a newsletter, they package a service that can be bought. So if you say, to cure a child, takes three dollars or five dollars. Somebody might do, we have to say, we have a project called adopt a bed for a child. And you can give your ten dollars and we know it will take fairly good care of the child. And the latest we have had is, our antenatal will take 70 euros for the whole care up to birth. So somebody might be interested in let a woman, you know, get a proper antenatal for free. So, why do you call that? This? This is exactly explaining. Specific what? Packaging. Oh, you specific package package. something that can be bought. Which can be bought. For example, this one is for a woman from, <coughs> from start of antenatal to delivery. And this is the cost. Hmm. That is the cost. So another time we have uh, the cost of treating a child, the cost of uh, supporting a woman. So you package it in a way that can be, can be bought. Then I think abroad, there is what we call tax waiver, but also locally. We have tried to get tax waived on certain equipment, especially when they're importing. Uh, but there it is like in Italy, I think Cinque per mille, it's, it's like a, a mandatory, you could give some part of your tax. So that uh, it, it is given. So, writing research, grant, um, this has been attempted and actually succeeded in some scenarios. And he insists that the research grant should leave something at the facility. For example, 
it should treat some patients. If you are doing a research of children with malaria, let the medicine be there. Let the test be for free or you pay for the test. And if you have used some equipment, leave it there. Don't again collect everything and go. So, and then train some people. So, so such collaborations uh, have been seen to, to support um, some. Uh, make uh, formal newsletters uh, or formal uh, outputs, especially our foundation writes a, a routine newsletter. And uh, there they even thank the donors specifically, thank you very much, writes the general report of the hospital status for the, for the donors. So I just wanted to give the, the specific experience of, uh, the, of, of our foundation, for example, at, at Lighto. So, Generally, I think I've said most of the things we wanted to say. So most of the people, who does it? Apart from a few, well, there's a, a dedicated team. Like uh, we said, for us, it was only patches. That seems to have a, a team of five that discusses and sits for this purpose, driven by the project development officers. Most of the other places are admin, medical director, <laughs> a, a, a duo. Eh? All three people in Kitum, we have the medical director together with the ad, admin and the finance or human resource and admin, something like that. So, so you have a, a scanty team on the ground. And sometimes you said when the team work, when there is success, they have incorporated or at least work with somebody who is experienced. And I think the idea of experience is key. But one thing in making it successful, so there's a question about what, what worked and what doesn't work. Most of these times, when the bishop is there, for example, for my time, the bishop really supports. If there is, he knows, the bishop understands the situation on the ground. Is it possible that your bishop doesn't know your situation? It could be. So, but the bishop really supports, especially the conference, the Episcopal Italian, they say is the Italian Episcopal Conference. The former. No, no, this is not Italian cooperation. But in the Italian cooperation, they tend to go together. So that letter is very helpful. That recommendation that the bishop can give can open many doors. So, experience are varied. There are some contacts, for example, Amber, with the US bishops, uh, friends of Father, Father Sam. There are some Belgian uh, friends. Um, so there are opportunities that are taken where people just come to do camps for specialized services. For example, they come to do camps and they leave their, if they were doing endoscopy, they leave some of the equipment, the, the equipment there. I think we had from, uh, was it Nyapea? Yes. So, uh, or urology camps, uh, ophthalmology camps. And with this, sometimes they bring staff, they bring, uh, some training and they, they bring some equipment, some medicines they carry with them. So, uh, now I wanted just to say specific. So, there's also partnerships so of German leprosy and TB project. This is supporting uh, Nyapea, especially Nyapea. And uh, there are also written projects to support equipment, COVID grant. GIZ. So, taking opportunity of whatever is on the ground, like COVID was there, and we had the situation, and our patients were there, government didn't want to recognize us. So, you write, and some people were able to support because of the nature of the emergency at that time. So, Anyapea uh, has been able to get an anesthesia machine, and then Otto uh, Lacho and Ben uh, Lacho had a foundation. I know Abel was also, there is some structure above the hospital. Uh, Kitbum has just uh, this, uh, the foundation assist, right? So the foundation, foundation for, for Kitbum assist. We know that Kaloma, the foundation has woken up, is waking up even more. The Ambrosoli Foundation. So it is important to keep contact. So most of these teams wrote project proposals, I think apart from the walking around the streets, but the project proposals either solicited or uh, like uh, competitive or uh, 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 either they are not being tracked properly, 
people are having problems with you, with targets here and there. Ah, this this is not nice. So you need to to be on you know on time and and, and. so expenditure management it is very crucial. So budgeting, accountability, and procedures. So start making relationships with donors and keep in touch. Keep in touch. I think this has been. Uh, been said many times. Uh, in some places, you said you could get dedicated resource mobilization officers or office or unit, but context specific. And then, if it is so bad, why? Why are they stuff? What is not working? Uh, you you can fire them. I think uh, that is it. So get promotional packages, branding of services. I think others are really good. Thank you very much. The other lower cadres in the various services. Um, it's just now up to everybody to make sure each employee in an institution start to think positively towards resource mobilization in a way that whatever activity they're doing actually in one in one way or the other contributes towards resource mobilization. Um, like yesterday we were trying to see the various sources of resources that we have. Uh, one of them is user fee. Now if an employee is trying to to mistreat or mishandle the client who is there. That's already chasing away resources. Um, that's one uh, aspect that I looked at. It. Then, um, two, um, the more we handle our clients well, many of them will come in, and also, of course, our user fee will start swelling. And also, um, the prospective donor would, would want to know how many people we are serving at some point. Probably. You're asking for money from us to offer these kind of services, but who are your beneficiaries? How many are, uh, are there? As to your prospecting, you should have a list. Either on the frequency of checks. So you know, for example, uh, EU has grants usually. And there, are, there can even be a timetable. You know a fair share. Yeah. Like EDCTP, WTDR, have a schedule. Probably February, March, you have a, uh, an application. October, you have a, a deadline. So if you have a list, you know a certain frequency with which you check. Um, you and then through the timelines, you, you can have a rough idea. And then if you are having any projects that are, are actually active, um, you can partner. You can actually know. Some of you have this project with IDRC. And as it is closing, all the partners we are asking mm -hmm. us, so so now what's the future like? What what does it look like? Mm -hmm. And they can give you a glimpse. They may not promise, uh, but they can help you to see a direction. So at least you, you have ideas that will fit into something. You know, right? um, and, and yes, that, that connection is very key. This, this, not just, uh, I, I did introduce uh, myself. Uh, my name is Sobame, and uh, currently coordinating the Infant Business Development Unit for the Uganda Catholic Medical Bureau. It hasn't met its second birthday yet, but uh, that is basically why I'm here, because these are the initiatives that have been now transferred into that, onto that desk. It is yet to become a section when it is skilled or uh, someone is already there. Uh, the main objective of that office is to increase and improve our resource mobilization efforts as a network. Uh, well, most of these activities, just like you, the resource mobilization falls on either the CEO or the administrator. But yes, we've been told that this should be a teamwork, but the team has to have a leader. So you as being leaders initially to us, it was falling on the, it falls on the direct executives. Uh, but now a specific office desk has been put aside to enhance, improve, and increase not only resource mobilization efforts of UCMB, but as well support our networks. So uh, having come uh, through through now this Wash and Competence Center, uh, we are happy to see that some of whatever we were thinking about and what we have in our plans, these 
workshops should be often. One told me already that they are talking, taking time, longer time to talk at breakfast because they really meet. So we should make it a quarterly, <laughs> a quarterly business to make to 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 for you to share, not only share problems but as well share solutions. We are already doing some things uh, together. We are sharing some things. We are finding solutions together. We have reflected as hospitals and uh, radio stations. Sometimes some of these things end here in the meetings. So please endeavor to see that uh, the things that we have decided or discussed here can permeate also to the rest of the facilities where we come from. Indeed, you need to try out. And what you are doing, and uh, doing not enough, now you have to do enough. Probably we may not have had resource mobilization <coughs> strategies. Please, let us go back and draft something. Let it be there as something that guides us. And they have packages that you can tell anybody who wanted to, to support you, for example. What would, would you present? What are you selling? So let us strategize um, and uh, come out with clear strategies, also including local uh, mobilization. Before we get the big grants, we need to get the 50,000, the 100,000. We we're discussing with somebody. Would you, who is here, not be uh, um, happy to, 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 to sponsor 10 children, for example, if the fees was just 10,000? So here we go. Yeah.